Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wokey, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. Why am I so quiet? Well, I was busy working today. When I finished working, I realized that they had added the Irish Goggle Banner and they had added more units, but there are people asleep in the house, so I'm going to have to be very quiet. I've made it so I think you should be able to hear me, but just to be sure, let me put the music even, even lower. There we go. Okay, and with that, let's start the video. What are we doing today? Well, we're going to be looking at the Fake Grand Order Carnival Recollection Campaign. Uh, in this limited Fake Grand Order Carnival Recollection Campaign, it, it will start, um, it will start right today, basically. Um, clear the Fake Grand Order Recollection Quest appearing with Caldea Gate during the period below to get the Craft Essence, the Fake Grand Carnival it's the second season. Um, it will be here until the 13th at least. Uh, to be eligible f to get the quest, you have to have beaten uh, Fuyuki. This it is. Here you go. This is a little simple C fe featuring Erish Goggle and um, uh, Hime. Double friend points for related servants for a limited time. Osekabe Hime Assassin um, will also <laughs> will get double friendship points from it. Um, through the Return of Halloween campaign, so you'll be getting it for a little bit longer. But the friend point bonus will not stack, so if you're wondering, this is the time for the Hime sweep of friends, of friend points? No. Uh, but the people who are on it are Ishikago, Osukabe Hime, and Mash. Uh, double chance of super and great suck for related servants, limited time. Osukabe Hime. During this campaign period, Osukabe Hime is also eligible for double chance of the Return of Halloween. Uh, it will not stack, and the same thing goes for Gene the Arc Alter, who is currently having a great site, great super suck early uh, chance up with Fate Samurai Remnant. So neither one of those will stack. The P eligible servants for this specific bonus are going to be Saber, Saber Lily, Nero Claudius, Irish Goggle, Jaguar Warrior, uh, Caster Vinci, Merlin, Gilgamesh, Hime Assassin, Gene Arc. Jean Arc, I guess, uh, Dantas, Alter, J Jolter, Setonia, and Mash. And yeah, let's talk about the banner because the banner is different from when Japan had it. When Japan had it, it only had Irish Goggle in it. And now they have added a but more <laughs> load of new characters. Uh, they got Jean, they have Setonia, they have Nero, and they have Jaguar Warrior. Um, three pickup sermons featuring five stars, including Limited Time Servant, Irish Goggle, and then you have Nero in the background. Plus the SR Winter Crystal, Winter Crystal will be summonable for in addition to story summons, which is a weird way of putting down that it's here. Um, from the 2nd to the 13th, that's when it's Irish Goggle's time. From the 5th to the 13th, that's when it's Jean's time. And from the 9th to the 13th, that's when it has Setonia. For some reason, just Setonia getting less days for some reason. That's weird. And each one of them will feature um, the story rate right up for uh, for Nero and Jaguar Warrior. So they will be featured in all three banners. Um, yeah. So they, they weirdly worded this regarding... It's just an early release for Winter Crystal. It will be in other summons, I think. But yeah, that's the schedule. Now let's talk about the units themselves real quick. We're gonna have to go to the other side over here uh, real quick just because it is, does bear mentioning because someone brought this up to me when I was talking about a three-star servant last time that was featured um, and he made a, they made a very good point and that is where, where are you you're somewhere up here I think Jaguar you're in a weird spot so Jaguar warrior is story locked what does that mean it means it's a pain in the ass to ever get story it's a very big pain in the ass to summon but more important most importantly it's a big pain in the ass to get coins for them so if you're someone who is crazy dedicated to jaguar man or jaguar warrior however you want to pronounce them because that was the change over here because <laughs> they went from jaguar man to jaguar warrior on a day this is going to be your best shot to get a whole buttload of coins potentially now, even if it is a, th a featured three, I can tell you based on some experience, it doesn't mean you're always going to get them every single um, multi. If that were true, I would have crazy levels of three-star craft essences. But it's better chance than nothing. So you can definitely get some coins while you have the chance. And if you're dedicated to Jaguar, I believe that you're going to do it. 
this is for a very specific set of people. I don't know how many of you out there are that dedicated to it, but if you are, have at it. Swing free. Um, and that, I felt like that bear mentioning. What does Jaguar actually do? Doesn't really matter. Next, not gonna go over what she says, but Nero. She's in a similar situation. She's story locked, very hard to get, very popular character, and also has so many costumes. She has an insane amount of costumes, and I think this is not going to be the last of it for when it comes to costumes. Um, they constantly buff her as well, so if you do get her as well, you'll be able to get a lot of cords from it. Let's see, let's counting this one, that's two. Four, six, and this was tied to an interlude, so I think that counts for that too. So that's at least eight sync chords. <laughs> um, and this is her third interlude, so she also has two interludes before this. So that's also you're also getting interlude sync chords. There's a lot of reasons why you would want Nero. Plenty of people like Nero, and I figure it just bears mentioning. Hey, this is a pretty good chance to get Nero. She will be featured again. Uh, when Nero Fest comes back, I think it's for the New York one, it's sometime around there. She'll be able to be gone in there, so if you want to continue waiting, and you're not really interested in getting either Erish Goggle, Sintonia, or uh, Jean, then this is your best chance to just kind of like, you can just continue ignoring it for the time being. Now let's go on to the SSRs. Uh, we will start with the first ruler in the game, Jean. Jean is, as you can see here, um, always in every single banner. She is not limited in any capacity. She does have a single costume dress, which is the this one right here. Um, Jean is a ruler. She has one quicks, three arts, one buster. First skill, Revelation A, gain critical stars every turn for three turns. Nine star regen, six cooldown. Second skill, the restoration of the brilliant holy light A, which is reduces one enemy's MP damage for one turn. Reduces their defense for one turn, reduces their defense for three turns. The MP damage down is 30%, the defense down is 20%, and the, uh, the additional second defense down is 30%. Uh, lasts for five turns. And the third skill is God Resolution A. Chance to bound one enemy servant for one turn. 120% on the cooldown of six. Now here's a note. Bound is similar to stun, but unlike stun, this effect ignores stun resistance and stun success rate up buffs. The reason is, is because it's not called stun, it's called bound. So, passive skills, magic resistance EX, her pen skill is a anti-ruler attack damage aptitude, trust no one, not even yourself, and her rank A, noble phantasm, is the luminest, eternal, god is here with me, arts, rank A, barrier type, grants party invincibility for one turn. Increases party's defense for 3 turns, removes party's debuffs, the defense up is 5% at level 1, it's 25% at level 5. Her overcharge effect, which is recover party's HP every turn for 2 turns, um, at charge level 1 it's 1000, if you get to the final charge it is 3000. That's Jean. Um, uh, as you can see, Jean is a very old unit. I think you can see it most in here. <laughs> this was the original ability of this. It was just that and nothing else. Uh, this ability also itself is very old, but the reason is is that she still is as effective as she was in the beginning of the game as to now. I think even today you can still see on JP teams. I think there was a, like she's always a part of the most stalliest of stall teams. She's excellent for stalling. The reason is is that she has three arts. She has an invincibility tied to her noble phantasm. Um, very easy to like art spam with her, especially when you consider Tamamo, who is also another arts unit with uh, an ability that can kind of help you get your skills back and then let you continue going on. If you for some reason aren't able to reach her invincibility, she does reduce MP damage for a single turn. She is able to have a stun that isn't a stun with bound, which is at 120%. The cooldown is a very respectable six turns. That's not bad um, when it's at the final level. This is on a five turn cooldown. That's also very nice. <laughs> The first skill is also on the 6 turn cooldown. So yeah, if you're a big fan of stalling, Jean is a staller. She stalls for time. She got banned from it in Yu-Gi-Oh. That's how crazy she is at stalling. I've seen Japanese players stall with her for like thousands of turns. <laughs> so if that's the kind of game you're looking to play, 
you're really here for a long time, not a good time, then Jean is your girl, and she will forever be your girl. The only negative about summoning for her is that because she is not limited, if they ever do do an SSR ticket, you can just get her from there. But also, eventually, she has, in theory, the ability to spook you. That's how I got my Jean. She just randomly showed up for me one day. But that's Jean. Let's go on to the next one. Who is an extra class? Alter Ego. And that is Setonia. Uh, Setonia is story locked, which is like limited with extra steps. And you have to complete Gotar da Marang. I completely butchered that one. Uh, she is an alter ego, like I said. One quick, two arts, two buster. Her first skill is the Snow Fairy EX. Grants uh, self invincibility for one turn. Reduces party's damage attack taken from attacks for three attacks, three turns. 500 damage taken down, cooldown of six. Her second skill is the Emotional Freezing Bee, increases own arts performance for 3 turns, grants self debuff immunity for 1 time 3 turns, 30% arts increase. Third skill is the Komo Yuker A, chance to increase own attack by 20% for 3 turns, chance to gain 10 crit stars every turn for 3 turns, uh, charges on MP gauge, the attack chance up is 80%, the star regen chance is 80%, and the MP is 30%, and the cooldown is of 6. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance C, Territory Creation A, Item Construction B, Goddess Assessance B, and she's also a High Servant. Her third skill is an Anti-Saber Attack Damage Aptitude. Her rank EX Noble Phantasm is the Roar My Friend My Strength, which is the thing where she summons her Berserker. It is an Arts Single Target, 6 hits, um, deals damage to one enemy, reduces Dragon Enemies MP Gauge by 1. MP at damage at level 1 is 900%, at 5 it is 15,000, reduces their defense for 3 turns, reduces their crit star attack chance for 3 turns, um, their yeah, crit attack chance for 3 turns, um, the defense down is 20%, the crit chance is down is, is 20%, if you get it all the way to the final overcharge it's 40% for both, and yeah, that's Atonia. Um So let's talk about it real quick. Obviously this skill right here is always going to be kind of a pain in the butt to deal with. It's really weird that they still have, I think it's because Chloe gives a buff to units like this that they choose not to just buff her herself so that she no longer has to deal with it. There are units that kind of can deal away with this specific playstyle. Let me see if I'm correct on the Chloe thing. Uh, Chloe von Eisenberg. Yeah, increases buff success rate of Ilya allies by 30%. So if you have Chloe on the team, this changes to 110% chance of happening, so that means it will happen. But if you're not specifically running Chloe, there's always a chance that this just fails, and that really, really super duper sucks. The MP up is 30%, which because she's arts, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, because you're running here typically with Castoria. The second skill is okay, granting self debuff immunity for one time three turns can sometimes come up. The first skill, the Snow Fairy EX, this is also another one that's just kind of okay. I feel like that's what I feel the most about her. I actually do have Zetonia, and I do use her from time to time. Whenever I do use her, it's when it's always to fight a dragon enemy. Um, the one thing you have to work out is because she is Alter Ego, she cannot fight every single dragon in the game. She can only fight the ones that have. It. she only has advantage over, so you have to be very careful about what type of dragon you're fighting. But thankfully, because this is skills, this is a fake Grand Order, you will find plenty of dragons. There's non-stop dragons, there's an abundance of dragons. Uh, Saber is considered a dragon, so you'll be perfectly fine. You will always find dragons to fight, it's not going to be an issue. Um, how often do I end up using her over other single target arts units? It kind of really does depend on whether or not I'm fighting a dragon. Even then, I do think there are better dragon slayers out there. Like, obviously, Siegfried is very good, even though he is AoE. Sigurd, you can only use him funny enough with that dude who... His name is escaping me right now because it's late and I wasn't thinking about him beforehand. Georgios. Georgios <laughs> makes it so that they're automatically given the dragon trait. So, you can definitely combo with him, and if you want to keep using her and doing it that way, it's definitely a thing you can do. 
it's definitely a case of like I look at Stonia's kit and I don't nothing really jumps out at me, but nothing also jumps out at me as, as too bad besides the percentage thing. And even then, if you're using it with a specific team that is catered to Ilya, which I assume if you're a big fan of Stonia, you're a big fan of Ilya and you would want to run a, a kind of Ilya based team, then it doesn't end up being too bad. The one thing I know is that fun story, not fun story. Setonia is the unit that my friend Lerp has spent over 2,000 quarts getting, I think. He was able, when he missed her on her original banner, which was a buttload of quartz wasted right there. But when she came back for Valentine's Day, I told him she shares a banner with um, Mur Murasaki. So you have a 50-50 chance. He summoned on that banner so many times. He had this. He eventually had to stop. That's the. This is the banner where he spent over two thousand in it. He stopped because he got his Murasaki to MP five and did not get a single Setonia. The man failed five 50, 50 chances of the featured unit five times in a row, and I think he eventually got her when they added in the pity. But it might have been a little bit before then. But I remember feeling always a little bit bad when I was like, if I tell him that Setonia is currently featured, I know he'll drop everything and go for it. But at a certain point, I can't have that over my head. <laughs> he did eventually get her an mp 5 though. So, a kind of happy ending. But it is a story that I think about whenever I see Setonia. And then I always joked with him that whenever eventually she came to NA, it was going to be like the easiest thing in the world for me to get. And yeah, it was one of the easiest things in the world for me to get. So let's go to the last unit now, the last five star, the woman with the power, the woman with the power, the woman of the hour, Irish Goggle. Where are you, Irish Goggle? There you are. This is a limited servant, so good luck trying to get this one. Irish Goggle, she is, um, honestly, I could just say she's Rin. End the video. That already tells me whether or not you're summoning for her. And that's all really you need. Um, she has one, two quicks, one arts, two buster. Her first skill is the secret great crown A. Chance to grant self uh, debuff immunity for one turn. Chance to grant self instant kill immunity for one turn. Chance to increase own buff removal resistance by 100% for one turn. Grant self invincibility for one turn. The debuff immunity chance is 80%, 80%, 80%. <laughs> Again, another unit that is maybe showing a little bit of her age, but it's a cooldown of six. Um, yeah, that's uh, at least the invincibility is guaranteed. The best way to see it is that these are the bonus, and the invincibility is at least guaranteed. The banner burst cage A plus increases own Buster performance for one turn. Charges on MP gauge. The Buster increases by 50%, and the MP up is 50%, and the cooldown is of six. Third skill, the Blessing of Kerr EX grants party the Blessing of Kerr buff for three turns, unstackable. Blessing of Kerr enables the additional effects from Erish Goggles NP, increases party's def uh, defense for three turns, increases party's NP generation rate for three turns, and then increases party's max uh, HP for three turns. 20%, 30%, and 3000 uh, healies in cooldown of six. Passive skills, Magic Resistance D, Territory Creation A+, and the Goddess Essence B. Her third skill is an anti-assassin attack damage aptitude. <laughs> a weird one to have, but sure. And her rank A+, plus Noble Fan has them after strengthening is the Kur Kigala uh, Erkala. The bellows of Kur that tramples upon Echor, A+, anti-mounted, <laughs> hits 5, uh, deals damage to all enemies, deals 150% 150 extra damage to enemies with the Earth attribute, uses attack with the Blessing of Kur buff for 20% for 3 turns, Increases their critical attack chance resistance by 20% for 3 turns. It grants them instant kill immunity for 3 turns. The damage is 400% at level 1 and it's 600% at level 5. The overcharge effect is an increased own buster performance for a single turn. Um, activates first, which is important. That means it applies first and then damage happens. The char At level 1, it's 10% buster. And at level final overcharge level, it is 50% if you can get her there. And oh my god, she has a skin, but I don't think I can show it to you. She has a skin. I forgot about the skin. Fuck. Fuck, I forgot about the skin that she gets. I can't show it to you. It comes later on, but uh, <laughs> it is a story spoiler, so I'm not going to show it. Um, the deal 150% damage to earth enemies. Just a real quick say, who is of the earth attribute here? 
All right, that's a decent chunk of dudes already. Who is, but the, I mean, they're Saber, so maybe I should look into some of the archers. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So, Irish Goggle. Um, who doesn't love Irish Goggle is my basic understanding here. This unit has been one of the ones I've wanted since she came out. Fun fact, Irish Goggle's banner almost broke me. It almost was the cause of me stopping Fago recording summons because not only was her summons just so bad, I don't think I got a single featured like four or three star CE, let alone five. Didn't get her, didn't get anything, and then also I had like hours worth of trouble trying to record and you can still see that video the video is still up there it is like maybe seven minutes long just because i was just like so tired and i was so done i was like what is even the point of doing anything man um that would eventually be fixed when my brother and i recorded the okita altar video and that basically reinvigorated me to do more stuff and story's done but either way Irish goggle is definitely one of the white whales of this game i've given up hope at this point of ever trying to get her because every single time i've tried it's just never worked out it's always been a pain in the ass it's always been a complete travesty it's always been a mountain fire and it's always made me very sad because she is still very solid and still very good it, she, when she released she was definitely one of the top units out there and i think now i don't know enough about her but i can't say that having a 50 percent Buster performance is very good, and charging your own NP gauge to buy 50% means that she can easily be used with Tamamo Vich, so that's not going to be an issue. And her other skills, the only thing that's kind of a bummer is this skill right here. <coughs> really doesn't give much attack up, but that's because so much of her attack is just built into this Buster performance. I would be interested to hear from people who um, have her, if you're how you're feeling on her damage. Obviously, if you're fighting Earth Attribute, she's going to be perfectly fine. But also because she's Buster, I think you're going to be perfectly fine because she is a Buster unit. But if you have Irish Goggle, feel free to tell me about how you feel about her in today's climate. But I would assume she's as solid. Probably not on the top as she was back in the day, but if, to hear, if she still is, I would love to hear it and I would love to know. Um, I, it, I think regardless of that... Irish Goggle could be one of the worst units in the entire game, and I would still summon for her. There's still a part of me that really wants to try at least throw a single ticket at her and see what happens, even though I've been saving so many of them for Ibuki. But it's tough. It's tough when it's a unit for... And especially because I really like Irish Goggle, and like I said, that costume that's coming out later is really good, but I think there will be more chances to summon for Irish Goggle. I'm just super tapped out at this point. I don't have any quartz to summon. I'm summoning for any of that I do have. I'm being I'm saving for um, Halloween that's coming up pretty soon, and I really can't justify throwing at least some of them away. I can maybe justify a single ticket, but I can't justify more than that, basically, which is a shame because I'd love to have her. And if you're going for her, I understand, and I wish you the best of luck in trying to get her. I've known people over the years who have told me their story saying like, man, I've been trying for years and I wasn't able to get her. I think one person finally recently told me I was able to get her off a random GSSR and I said, that's amazing. That's the dream. <laughs> that's what you hope from a GSSR is that you get the actual unit you care about the most from it. <sighs> but I digress. That's the banner. She's going to be coming up sometime when day roll hits today when you hear this video. If you're coming to this video late, then she's already up there. But again, feel free to tell me how you do. I'm curious to see how many people are going to be summoning for her. Um, I was not 100% sure if they were going to even do the banner, but now that they've done it, they've also made her banner much better than it was on the JP version of the game. Because like I said, on the JP version of the game, it was just her. Um, and nothing else. It was literally the, do you want Irish Goggle banner? Yes, no. If the answer was yes, this banish for you but now that i realize it so summoning campaign yeah she was on it but i just realized fade apoc that was supposed to have gene is this not going to be happening is that why gene is on this one huh hmm i guess we'll wait and see but either way that's the end of the video everyone thank you very much for watching um hopefully me being quiet didn't hurt you too bad as always you can show support by leaving a like and subscribing um growing more and more every single day and i appreciate you guys very much for it uh it's been kind of rad to go through and it still kind of makes me feel like wow i can't believe 
I, I literally can't believe it. Who the hell wants to hear me say anything? But that's the end of the video, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Best of luck on your summons, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. Bye-bye. Goodbye. I need to be better at ending videos. I always just say bye a bunch of times. Bye!